the Sunny and Shay Show here on Brit Asia TV. And thank you for our lovely live studio audience who are making you so excited today. Thank you. Thank you. We have a packed show for you tonight. We're going to be talking to a DJ who now does a lot more than DJing. We're going to be talking to a star from one of our favourite shows. It's based in the East End. You might know it as EastEnders. Plus, if you like going to the corner shop to buy your milk, then you're definitely going to want to know about this corner shop. All of that to come here on British Asia TV. Welcome to the Sunny and Shea Show. Now, as we said earlier on, we have got a brilliant lineup for our lovely sofa, and we're so honoured. Our next guest, who's going to be coming on our sofa, he's already been on many talk shows, and we're so privileged that he's got time to come and spend time with us. Now, for many women here in the UK, they love him, and for all the men, they want to be him. We're of course talking about Nitin Ganatra. Come on! Welcome, welcome. I'm giving you away. <laughs> right. How are you, sir? I'm good. Who so, wants to be me? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wrong answer, because everybody is so excited to see you right now. Because you are by far the non-Asian Asian on TV. I've never been called the non-Asian Asian ever because no one in my sees life. you. No one ever sees you as an Asian on TV. Everyone just no. sees you as someone, uh, the actor from EastEnders, and you know, yeah. you're not in that box. Not anymore, no. Yeah. I, think, I think when we first started, we were the Asian family. Yes. And now the, the general public really, really have taken this, these characters to their heart. So we're now the family from EastEnders as well. There's been something that, Nitin, I've been wanting to ask you for years, because Sonny, okay. Sonny's mum, dad, Tindy and I, we watch EastEnders every single week. But how in advance do you record? Is it a week in advance, a good couple of weeks in advance? Because we just don't know what's going to happen next. And I'm often thinking, Nitin's so busy, when does he get to film everything? It, well, we film roughly six weeks to two months in advance. Okay. Like, we've done all the Christmas episodes wow. now. Wow. So you so know who dies. Yeah, yeah. But then sometimes, you know, you could have some kind of world event going on right. and then they will go in and film on that day for example when Michael Jackson died yes. yes they went and filmed that day and it went out that day so they edited a scene and put it in but usually we're, we're quite well in advance and now how is it working on a weekly soap because it's it's do you have time to do other acting gigs or is that just off the cards um, it depends it really depends how busy you are right. I mean I you know the, it would be nice to go off and play other characters, mm. but um, it, you don't often get that too much time because that a show like EastEnders is a full time. Uh, it's like a full time factory. Yeah, it doesn't stop. The only time it stops is for two weeks at Christmas. That's it. Let's talk about the ladies, okay? Because ladies. they love the <laughs> They love you. And we've seen the following on Twitter. There are women across the country who <laughs> love Masood, aka Yeah, Nitin. there's a lot of flirty Twitter girls out there. There are. Yeah. But what, what, what and I like the fact that you retweet them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot. Look what they said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they said about me? I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Honestly, how does that make you feel? Because it must be nice to know that, you know, you've got a, a, a legion of fans, but you are seen as a little bit of a sex symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> no, I, I am a sex symbol. <laughs> you I didn't hear anyone disagree. <laughs> am I a sex symbol? Yes! <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, don't you never take Twitter too seriously? Right. Like, you know, it, it, it's fun. Twitter is fun. I've only been on Twitter for a year, right. just over a year, and uh, I'm so. I'm, but but it's fun. It's it's not to be taken you, seriously. You I don't take Twitter any of that. Twitter aside, though, I know you get stopped in the street. Women love to take pictures with you. You've got fan pictures. <laughs> Let's not downplay this now, Nick. Well, listen, I'm a hot favourite with everyone's aunties. That's that's about it. <laughs> you know, never never their daughters, just their aunties. <laughs> so I get that a lot. I get that. Oh, my my mum loves you. But, but here's the thing, uh, so now your, your career started on film, all right? You were a film actor, you still are a film actor. No, my career started in theatre. Oh, really? So okay, I, yeah, tell yeah, us. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so then, which theatre did you start off at? Well, I, I grew up in Coventry, mm. uh, and I went to the Belgrade Youth Theatre in Coventry, and, uh, and then <clears throat> started doing plays and stuff like that from a very early age. And then theatre is really where you learn really train yourself because mm. it's a much much harder form to be able to do show after show after show and keep it spontaneous and keep it interesting if, if it's the same lines you've been saying 
for a few months now. How do you yeah. keep that interesting? So I did that, been at the National, been at the RSC, the Donmar Warehouse. So I did a good long time in the theatre to learn my trade as an actor. And then, you know, th being an actor doesn't mean one thing. It yeah. means one day you'll be doing a film, one day you'll be doing a radio play, one day you'll be doing a commercial. It involves everything. So, so you, it's very much a career. That's your job. It's my right? job. It's not, yeah. it's not a star-making idea. So some people might No, think you know what? I always say this to young, young people who want to go into acting or music and stuff like that. I said, you know, you just make sure you're not doing it just to be famous. Right. Mm. Because the fame is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. It's about working. And you, you, you know, the, it's about surviving a career as well. I want to be acting till I'm 90. Right. At 91, I'll stop. <laughs> but, uh, 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 it, it, but those people who are famous overnight tend to also get forgotten overnight. Right. But yeah. it's about consistency of your work that will carry on. And you, you, there are, when you watch a film or TV, you'll see lots and lots of people who have been working for years and years and years. And you'll start seeing them and go, I saw him in that film, I saw him in that film, I saw him in that TV show, but I still don't know his name. Right. Because he's not famous. But the industry will keep hiring you for, your, for, for the work that you do. Uh, uh like Mr. Singh in, uh, in EastEnders, he's always walking around. He's got his own Facebook page and no one knows his know, name. And do I you know, know him? I do very much. I know is the whole keeping, family. So is he keeping his identity quiet on purpose? Uh, is he uh, not, he's not with capitalized the size on the of pain? that turban, you can't keep your identity <laughs> quiet. He's got the biggest bug on the show. Yeah. So, you know. And, and he's got the only bug on the and show. And does he know that he is quite, you know, he's one of the icons? I think they do know, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, but there are, there are people on that show who have been supporting artists, otherwise known as extras, yeah. who have been on that show for. The whole period, 30 wow. years they've been there. Wow. So they're established in there, yeah. So now, what do you think about our British film industry? Because, uh, you know, the British film industry is something that goes up and then it comes down. But our actors are going abroad and taking over Hollywood. Um, well, you go where the work takes you. Mm -hmm. So if the work's not here, then you go abroad. Um, the, the, the British fi film industry has always been a very small market um, and fits into European film style making. So it's never been big blockbuster, and that's partly to do with finance. Mm -hmm. America's got a lot of money to spend on its TV shows and films, and, and now it's all changing because the investment has crossed over. You've got America, Spielberg and George Lucas all investing in India. A lot of the animators are all in India. All the computer and CGI special effects are coming from yeah. India. Yeah. So it's all getting mixed up now. And, and I, you know what? It's something to be proud of. If you've got Chewy Tell and you've got Idris Elba going over there, you know, yeah. growing up in Tooting and Hackney and going over there and taking America by storm, you can only be proud. So true. Now, yeah. you, you are currently playing quite a dream role, I have to say, because for a lot of EastEnders fans, they have followed you as in the family, right? But is there a role that you've always wanted to play that you've not got the opportunity to play? Winston Churchill. Win you want to play the Winston, Asian Churchill? Winston Churchill? No, no, I want to play the white guy. The right. Why would I want to play the Asian guy? Yeah, yeah. I'm right. Asian. I want yeah. to play the white guy. Right. So <laughs> why, why Winston? Why yeah. Winston? Because, you know, like we had Ben Kingsley, he did it. I don't know. There are so many interesting roles to play. And um, uh, you know what? If the, if the role is good, I'm up for it. So, in terms of historical characters, yeah. it's not often Asians get to play anything other than Asian. Right. Yes. So, or a terrorist, which means you could be anyone. <laughs> um, uh, but there, there, there are so many characters. You know, the thing is, I, I'd love to go back into comedy again. Brilliant. Do a bit of comedy. Because you're a funny guy. So, Talking of which, we've got a little game we want to play with you. Right, because we have to test you now. How long have you been on EastEnders? Oh, no. <laughs> how long, how long, how long? <laughs> I'm really bad at these sort of things, you know. Um, I've been in it seven years now. Seven years? Yeah. Okay, so seven years as a postman, be it acting, <laughs> but you have to, you know, to a certain degree, take your profession seriously, right? So we've got some yeah. post. Oh, I'm not we that method. Post. So, the first we postcode. To, yes. ST16. There no. is no such place. ST16. ST16. What location is that? So we want you to guess the location from the postcode. Is this in Lo all in London? Yes. No, it's across the country. What? No, it's not. It's in I'm London. a postman in the east end of London. Okay, go on. So ST, Stoke on Trent, maybe. <laughs> Does uh, anyone have any ideas? ST, no, Stoke. Staffordshire. 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 Who said that? That's your envelope. Yes, Staffordshire. We're give that Staffordshire. To you. There is prizes in here, you know. 
Really? Yes. yes. So it might give you a bit of motivation. Okay, well, these yours. two are in London. Okay. Right. Okay, so, South East London. Oh, sorry, South East One. So SE1. SE1 is South East London, yeah. Well, yes. Should we say Putney, round about their area? Not too bad. South Bank London. South Bank, there you go. There you go, yeah. right. right. We'll let him have that one. All right. Okay. That's and me. W8. Where's W8. W8? West London. It's Chiswick. Close. Wimbledon. No. no. Um, Think the other way. Further in, Hammersmith. Yes. Go more. Very close, begins with a K. Mm, Hammersmith, Shepherd's Bush. No. Ladies and gentlemen. Kensington. Kensington. Oh, right. That's yours. We're yeah. going to give that to the audience, but you've got AC1, so you there can you have it. Oh, I got one. one. I got one. Yeah, you got one. So you can open so that if you like. We're going to dish this out. Yeah, because the we've got it right there, and that lady over there got it right as well. So do you want to okay. open it? You want to see what you got? Yeah, let's see what we've got. There you go. And the winner is. For the best Asian accent on you got, BBC. You got one right out of three, that's oh, not bad. Oh, I got a chocolate. You got yeah! a chocolate! And whilst Nitin enjoys the chocolate, we'll be straight back after this break on British Asia TV. We're going to be talking more with Nitin, plus we've got Nihal and Isla Abdul Rahman yet to come.